Well, friends, good morning and welcome to Wellversed. It's good to be together again. And I pray that our time will be blessed as we do. I'm going to challenge you today with a little passage from Scripture. Uh, Sometimes Scripture has a way of sending out a message. And as I was working with this, I realized that this is one of them. And sometimes we have to see and understand the challenges that Scriptures give us. And this is one of those little passages. It's all about repentance. It's Luke chapter 13 from verse 1 to verse 9. Definitely, this is a passage to read between the lines, but let me read it to you for starters. Now, there were some present at that time who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. Jesus answered, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this way? I tell you, no. Unless you repent, you too will all perish. Or those 18 who died when the tower in Siloam fell on them, Do you think they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. And then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, For three years now I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree, and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year, and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. Just to there. And I want to say it again, this is definitely a passage to read between the lines. Because it has to do with forgiveness, and it has to do with repentance. And above all, it has to do with God's love and God's patience with us. We don't know why Pilate did what he did, mixing blood of Galileans and and so on. We don't know why he did that. What we do know is that Pilate was a very cruel man. And so whatever he had done, you could be pretty sure that it was going to be negative. And so the people go to Jesus and they believed that if this was them, they had to be very sinful and that God was punishing them. Ever felt that God is punishing you? I think we have all felt that from time to time, that maybe what I've done, God's not very happy about. And so these Galileans and us, if you think about it, we're no worse sinners than anybody else. You know, if you think about it in its purest form, sin is sin. Sin is anything that separates us from God. Scripture doesn't grade sin into acceptable sin and unacceptable sin. Sin is simply sin. Anything that separates us from God, the Bible calls sin. And so in verse 3, Jesus is trying to make the point here that the Galileans and us are no worse sinners than any other, or better for that matter. We are what we are. We are simply sinners. And we must, I think, and this is for me the message of this little passage, We must beware of judging people by the suffering they endure. Sometimes we tend to say they must have done something pretty rough. Look what they're dealing with. And I think we need to be aware of that. Please let's remember God is love. And God's greatest desire is to forgive. I don't know where you are, but I think we've all been in a place from time to time when we think to ourselves, yo, I don't know whether God can forgive that one. And we need to be reminded that God is love. And his greatest desire is to forgive. And then so if we look at verse 4 and 5, it talks about those who died when the Tower of Siloam fell on them. And do you think they were more guilty than the others? That's exactly what I've just said. Sin in the end is simply sin. Perhaps verses 6 and 7 are about God giving the Jews more time to repent and us the parable of the fig tree, and the man wanted to cut it down because it wasn't bearing fruit. And the gardener says, leave it with me for three more years. Let's see if I can feed it and encourage it and water it and so on. Maybe it will recover. Maybe these verses are about God giving the Jews more time to repent. And us, and us, verses 4 and 5 talks about 18 people, but they were no more guilty in God's eyes 
than all the unbelieving Jews. In the end, sin is simply sin. And so now, between the lines, verses 6 through to 9, uh, the parable of the fig tree, people who don't do good usually do harm by their example. I think that's fair to say. If you're not doing good, then you're going to be doing harm, however you do it, whether it be verbal or active. Verses 8 and 9, he then talks about the gardener who actually says, give the tree more time. Give those sinners more time, if you like. And if this be the case, then Jesus was asking the Father to delay the punishment to give them time to repent. And I think we're still in that time, my friends. Jesus is still giving us time to repent. And I know that very many people are uncomfortable when preachers talk like this. But I think God is giving us time. But I'm not sure how long God's prepared to wait. And I don't want to (laughs) take it further than that. But I believe that God is giving us time, but not forever. The warning then and now is that there is not much time left. When Christ comes again, it will be too late. Now, I don't know when Christ's going to come again, do you? So maybe there's a sense of urgency in the story that Jesus is telling here, that we do not know the time or the place. And when he comes again, for many people, it will then be too late. And I don't want to be one of those. And I'm sure you don't either. So I want to suggest that we too, like the gardener, can have more time to repent. We do have more time to repent. But the warning is still there. And so we still have time to share the gospel and encourage the people around us to repent. And I don't think that that's the prerogative of the clergy. I think that as Christians, it is an imperative for us to call the folk around us to repentance. And sometimes that's the most difficult thing of all because generally these are the people that are closest to us. And when we call them to repentance, sometimes it doesn't go down too well. Maybe I can leave it like that. But I still believe that God is calling us in this little passage to be an example. To just live the kind of life that tells your story. The Jesus story, that is. And so my prayer today, my friends, is that you will just reflect a little. Where are you in terms of your journey with Jesus? Is there a need for repentance? Is there a need to be forgiven, of course, I suggest that's true for all of us. And so let's just leave it there. And I pray that you will have a time to just reflect a little on what I've said this morning. Let's pray. Father, we understand that sometimes our lives don't tell your story. Sometimes our lives tell a very different story. We want to ask you to forgive us for that. We want to ask you if you would just be with us as we take a moment now to lay our lives before you and to ask for your cleansing and your renewal and your blessing. So please go with us into our day, O God, and we thank you for the assurance that we have that our sins are forgiven. Please help us to understand, O God, that you have a sense of urgency in this, and maybe we should too. Bless us now as we go our separate ways and may our lives tell your story today, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a wonderful day, friends, and be blessed.